How does boost affect your motor oil? Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and to answer that question, let's reload this segment from the Engine Performance Expo. Since we're gonna run this engine both naturally aspirated and on boost, we decided we would take an oil sample of the engine after we've done all the NA runs, and then we'll take another oil sample after we're done doing all the boosted runs to see how much difference we see in the oil just between the engine being run NA and running on boost. So let's take this sample from the NA runs, then we can compare it and show you the results from the boosted runs. Okay, we just made a whole bunch of big boost, over 20 pounds of boost, dyno runs, making over 1,300 horsepower. Now, let's take a sample of this oil after running on big boost. Now we'll send it off to the lab and show you the results. Do you remember those old ads about, you know, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs? Well, I kind of feel like the same thing looking at these results, like <laughs> this is your oil, this is your oil on boost. Ooh, wow, thank God for oil analysis because, you know, we've been doing this a long time, you know, me and Ben doing dyno testing out there. And it puts away, we're not gonna run this engine with 5w30 in it ever again <laughs> at least not on 20 pounds of boost wow these results are, are quite amazing now the guys that driven had given us some br30 to test out we can run this engine really cold that way we keep the viscosity up so we can protect the engine so we thought so we decided we would run the engine cold we made eight runs naturally aspirated, you know, everything was fine in terms of combustion analysis and all that stuff looked great. Then we went ahead, hooked up the blower. Now we're making, you know, 20, 22 pounds of boost. We're making 1300 horsepower. We made 16 runs, you know, on boost. And wow, it crushed that oil. And it's not the oil's fault necessarily, because if you think about it, when you add boost, we're putting more air into the engine. Well, to have complete combustion, we need to put more fuel in the engine as well. And that's exactly what we see. When we make more runs at a higher level of boost, we're putting more fuel into the oil, not just the engine. Well, some of that fuel is burning and making power, but some of that fuel fails to vaporize and makes its way into the oil. And what we see from these results is it's super clear that when you have a higher level of fuel dilution, it lowers the viscosity of the oil. And when the viscosity of the oil goes down, the level of wear goes up. Pretty straightforward and <laughs> these are picture perfect results. As you add boost, as you put more fuel into your engine, you're also putting more fuel into your oil. Therefore, you need to increase the viscosity of the oil. And that's exactly what we can take away from these results. So let's dig into the details a little bit. And we start over here in the far right hand column, the AAA0173. That was the first runs we made after breaking in the engine. And that was all done in a, we were running 15W40 oil. We made 10 runs, you can see, 
The viscosity was 15.1. We had a little over 2% fuel dilution. But again, this is a drag race type of engine. It's got aluminum rod. So we're not going to run this engine continuously like you would run, you know, an endurance engine or a normal streetcar engine. So this is a little bit of a unique engine. It's really more of a drag race type engine. So we're going to run it colder. And because of that, you kind of expect to have a little more fuel dilution. I don't love that, but we'll live with it, okay? Again, we still have good viscosity even despite that with the 15W40. We roll down, we look, you know, the iron's at 28 parts per million. The copper's at 43, it's a little bit high, but again, this engine's a little bit different. It has bushings for all the lifters and the lifters themselves actually have a bushing inside of them. So there's a lot of copper in this engine, more than a normal engine. So it actually doesn't bother me that the copper is high because I know there's a lot of copper in the engine. And over time, that number should go down, which we see the trend analysis says it does kind of go down as long as we are doing things correctly, which we'll see as we move through this. So again, there's higher level lead, but that's a leaded fuel. Again, not worried about it. So I'm not really too concerned about how that first sample looked, you know, post initial break-in. Well, then we hook up the supercharger, put a low level of boost. We ran, you know, the, the bigger pulley, not the smaller pulley. And, you know, we're 35 parts per million on the iron. Copper dropped down to 17. Everything's looking pretty good. Actually, it's getting better, right? And that's actually running a little bit thinner oil. We put in 10W30 instead. We're like, okay, things are not too bad there. Well, now we move on. We went ahead and put on the smaller pulley, make more boost. We made many more runs. And now we see the fuel dilution go up. And again, the viscosity goes down as fuel dilution goes up. And what happens? All the wear goes up. Iron shoots up to 63 parts per million. And then copper goes back up to 34. And we're seeing a little bit of tin showing up, which is an overlay in the bearing materials. That's because that viscosity is getting a little bit lower. And we're like, okay, of course, higher level of fuel dilution, you see more lead because there's lead in the fuel. So everything jives and correlates there. Well, that's how we ran it before this last test where we put in the 5W30, you know, braking oil from Driven. And of course we were, again, a little more concerned about that. Now, here's the thing that, that shows up right off the bat is water. We didn't see water when we were making the NA runs or those low boost runs. Why? It's because we weren't worried about detonating the engine. We weren't pushing the engine to its limit. So we were just running it, running it. And actually not shutting the engine down in between power runs. That's the key. We let it idle between power runs, which actually kept a little more temperature both in the water and in the oil, which allowed that water, because water is being made in each combustion event. But if the engine is running cold, then that water can condense and show up in the oil samples. Again, when those first runs, we were letting the engine idle in between making dyno runs because we weren't pushing the engine. We weren't scared about stepping over the edge and hurting the engine. There's no water because the water temperature and oil temperature were high enough to evaporate out the water. Ah, but when we turned the boost up, when we advanced the timing and we got a little more closer to the edge and we were running the lighter weight oil, we didn't let it idle in between those power runs. And it jumps right off the page in big red and white that it's positive for water because of no other change other than how we were running the engine. So that's one of those environmental impacts. So that's one thing to consider when you're looking at oil change intervals, things like that. It's not just the oil you're running. It's not just the engine you have. It's also how you use the engine. The environment that it operates in has a major impact on the outcome here. The same oil went from not having water to having water through no other thing other than how we ran the engine. And then when we get to the 5W30 oil, what we see right off the bat here is that obviously it's a lower viscosity, 10.2 you know, centistokes at 100 degrees C. Yep, it's positive for water. Fuel dilution went down because we were getting the tune up a little bit better and everything, but 
is positive for water because we're running it cold. Now, at Na, the wear metals go back down. We're at 49 parts per million iron versus the 63 when we were on boost. Copper drops from 34 down to 13. Everything's looking pretty good. The aluminum's at 13 parts per million. But again, that's back to a lower viscosity oil. We're getting a little bit more wear. You can see this engine wants more viscosity. It's exactly what it's telling us from all of these results. And it also wants to be run a little bit warmer. So takeaways from this is run the engine a little bit warmer, put a little more viscosity to it, and the engine's gonna be a lot happier than how we're running it right now. And then of course, when we put on the small pulley and we're making 20, 22 pounds of boost, ooh, wow, 5.9 Cinestokes on the viscosity. So that's like a 016. So we killed the viscosity of the oil with both the load of the engine, crushing the polymers in it, and that higher level of fuel dilution. So fuel dilution went up, viscosity went down, and guess what? We know the results are gonna be, right? Wear goes way up. Iron goes to 75 parts per million. Copper goes up to 16, it's coming back up again. And aluminum, the piston skirts, up to 18. So the moral of the story is you definitely wanna run the right viscosity of oil in your engine. You don't wanna to be too thin for how you're operating the engine. Viscosity is the most important characteristic of a lubricant. And boy, these results show that this engine needs a little more viscosity, but that's the great thing about having the used oil analysis data. We now know exactly what to run in the engine going forward, and we know how to run the engine better going forward. And all that is thanks to these used oil analysis results. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.